Hello. Here we'll start with uh, one more example of writing a symmetric polynomial as polynomial in elementary functions. So the example will be um, a polynomial of four variables, x1 to x4. And what I will write this polynomial as, I'll just take all possible sums of different variables and take the product of all those sums. So the number of possible sums of two variables will be two choosing out of six, will, sorry, out of four will be six. And uh, here they are. So the three will contain x1, then two more will contain x2, and then there will be one left with x3. Next one. That is uh, obviously a symmetric polynomial, and as such, it should be possible to write it as a polynomial in elementary symmetric functions. Symmetric polynomials and will have uh, four of them sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma 4. And to do that, I have to um, start with a leading polynomial. By the way, this is homogeneous as, all, uh, as most of my examples. So there's nothing to do in the homogeneous department. It is already homogeneous. So I'll have to, to have to have to pick the highest monomial, the highest in the lexicographical sense. And that is easy. I just need to go through all my factors and choose uh, highest monomials there in them and then combine them all. So the highest in this is x1, x1 again, x1 again, x2, x2, x3. So altogether I'll have three copies of x1, so x1 cubed, then I'll have two copies of x2, x2 squared, and I'll have one uh, of x3. And that is the highest, and whatever is after is less than that. So the uh, degree vector of this monomial is 3 and 2 and 1 and 0, because we have four coordinates, we have four variables. So now to um, um, I write the template for my final answer as polynomial of symmetric functions, I have to list, um, starting with this highest um, vector, I have to list all vectors which can serve as highest um, monomial labels for my uh, symmetric uh, function products. So they have to be in total sum matching with this 6, and then they have to be um, non-increasing, and um, that is all. And it has to be, of course, they have to be uh, less than this, than this one uh, in the lexicographic sense. So what I can do, I can do 3, and then all 3 ones. And that is less, and that is non-increasing, and that is uh, with a sum in 6. I could also do 2, 2, 2, and I could do as well 2, 2, and then 1, and 1. And that is it. That is all I can do. And the product of symmetric functions corresponding to this vector will be sigma 1 to the power 3 minus 2 to the first power, sigma 2 again to the first power, sigma 3 to the first power, and no sigma 4. And in here I'll have sigma 1 squared, and then no sigma 2, no sigma 3, just sigma 4. And then here I will have sigma 3 squared. And this vector will correspond to sigma 2, uh, first power, and then sigma 4. And I have unknown coefficients here, here, and here. And uh, the first monomial is um, with coefficient 1 because it has to match the coefficient 1 in here. So I have to find the three unknowns. I will do it by um, the substitution method as before. So I will imagine three. Um, choices for the values of my uh, axis, and uh, I will compute what happens on elementary symmetric functions of those axes, and then what happens uh, with this polynomial. I will call this polynomial partial d. 
So the first choice will be 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1 for say, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Let us try to what is the order since they are all symmetric. So sigma 1 uh, being the sum of all is 0. And that is a um, um, partial reason for making this design. Sigma 2 is um, more interesting. Sigma 2 is the sum of all products of different two things. So we all we have again two choosing from six, we have uh, sorry, two choosing from four, <laughs> we have six such products and two of them will be positive one. Uh, it will be this product of the first and the second and the third and the fourth will give us also positive one. Other four will have to be negative one and uh, the overall sum will have to be negative 2 because we'll have negative 4 and positive 2. Then sigma 3 is the sum of triple products and that has to be 0 as well. Well we can just count how um, many products. We have four such triple products and uh, two of them will be positive, two of them will be negative. Positive is when we take negative one and negative one in a triple product and then we'll have one of those guys and um, negative the other way around. So the overall sum is zero. And sigma four is the product of all four and it is of course one. And our original polynomial here is equal to zero because uh, we can uh, see that uh, there will be a sum of one and negative one as one of those factors appearing as one of those factors and it will annihilate the polynomial. So that is, um, yeah, I could immediately put it into use by substituting in my equation here, substituting these values for x's and seeing what it tells me about my unknowns. So uh, being uh, zero for sigma, having zero for sigma one and sigma three, I'll have this term vanishing, this term vanishing, this term vanishing. The only one with which survives is this, and it will be sigma two being negative two, sigma four being positive one. So that will be negative twice gamma, matching with zero, and immediately gamma becomes zero. So I really don't have this term uh, that is zero. It doesn't really appear in my expression. So I'll have to continue finding the other two unknowns. Two substitutions I should make. I will not design something really clever. I'll just take 1, 1, 1 and that will make sigma 1 the sum uh, being 3, sigma 2 the sum of pairwise products. Um, I'll have I'll have uh, 6 of them um, sorry, now I'm saying it wrong. I'll have three of them. Um, because of this last x4 being zero, I can think of my sigma 2 as sigma 2 on three variables x1, x2 and x3. And of course um, uh, with 1, 1, 1 substitution it gives me 3. Sigma 3 in the same way will be just giving me 1. Sigma 4, the overall product of the 4 will be 0. And then um, what happens with the original polynomial on that collection? Um, we can see that this is um, going to be 8. So that is because we have um, three factors being 2 and uh, three other factors being 1. And 2s appear when we take the, the sum of um, any of, of, of our 1s, pair of our 1s, and then we have three other pairs uh, when we sum 1 and 0. So overall product will be 2 cubed, will be 8. So again, putting it immediately to use, we'll have 8 matching with this side. And um, sigma 1 being 3, sigma 2 being 3, sigma 3 being 1, the first one is going to be 9, 3 squared. Then with alpha, I will have it zero because sigma four is zero, and this term with beta is going to be the cube of sigma three, which is just one. So the square of, of uh, sigma three, and that gives us uh, the answer for beta being negative one. So this is just no beta at all, just negative one. 
and uh, to determine the uh, remaining unknown alpha, I will just substitute all ones for my axis. So then I will be just counting how many monomials I'll have in each of my elementary polynomials. I'll have four, I have six, I have four again, and I have one. And then the act, uh, the, the actual polynomial is going to be the sum. Um, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 in every factor, so I'll have 2 appearing 6 times. Again, I'll just write the equation. So that is the left hand side. On the right, I'll have all these guys. The first product is 4 squared times 6. Then with coefficient alpha, I have um, 4 squared times 1. And then uh, with coefficient negative 1, I have 4 squared again. So um, let's see what it says about alpha. Well, what can we do? We can um, cancel out 4 squared. Uh, let's uh, single out 4 squared in this. So 4 squared is 2 to the 4th, and we'll have 2 to the 6th. So we'll have 2 squared times 4 squared. And then cancelling 4 squared out everywhere, I'll simplify my, my equations. I'll have 4 on the left, I'll have 6 plus alpha minus 1 on the right. And uh, when we do the cancellation further, so we'll have negative 2 and then um, positive 1. So we'll just have alpha being negative 1 as well. And um, yes, that is the, um, the answer for, the, um, for this polynomial written as a combination of, of elementary symmetric functions. Um, why this polynomial special in what way? Uh, let me remind you of the special polynomial associated to a one variable polynomial called the discriminant. The discriminant is the product of differences of roots all square. So I will write it as the square of this product of differences of roots. In all different roots. If I have degree d, I have d roots in, uh, say, some uh, extension in the splitting field, and that will be um, this limit giving me this limit. So, um, um, what happens in characteristic free, so what happens modulo 2, is that this polynomial is congruent to the polynomial of the shape we just examined. Because modulo 2 minus and plus are all the same, and this polynomial is manifestly symmetric. So what we uh, verify is the discriminant is uh, a square modular modular 2. It's always a square modular 2. And uh, this calculation gives us a particular instance of that general fact. So if we start with a polynomial of degree 4, here we have four unknowns, so we can think of them as four roots of this polynomial of degree 4. Uh, we'll make it monic, so it will be starting with t to the 4, plus say some coefficient t cubed, plus some coefficient t squared plus some more coefficient times t plus uh, the free coefficient. So these coefficients in terms of the roots are up to sign elementary symmetric functions. This will be sigma 4, the product of them. This will be with negative sign sigma 3. This will be with positive sign sigma 2. This will be with negative sign sigma 1. So what we uh, then can 
say is that the discriminant of this polynomial f is congruent to the square of um, um, of this expression and uh, modulo 2 and this expression we can now read uh, out, out, um, out in in terms of coefficients so the first triple product is a product of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 well, the two minuses um, cancel out anyway, so we'll have the product of B, C, and D. And then with minus sign, which is as good as plus sign, we have the product of the sigma 1 squared and sigma 4. Sigma 1 squared is as good as B squared, and sigma 4 is uh, E. And then we have the square of sigma 3, and sigma 3 is negative D, but squared is just D. Anyway, modular to um, uh, it doesn't matter if we take plus or minus. So that is an explicit square root of the discriminant which we just computed here. See you later.